coin on. Hello, YouTube. This is Robert with Coin On. Okay, in this next interview, uh, John Brandon Bowie, he takes and he's interviewing a Patrick Hipple. Uh, Patrick's with the Osborne Mint. Last year, we were supposed to do some work with him, but we both got so busy, plus, you know, the <coughs> was out there. But this year, we plan on doing more with the Osborne Mint. Now, um, of course, I've had a few procedures done health-wise, and I'm recovering. But the sooner I recover, the sooner we will be getting content at the Osborne Mint. I just wanted to jump in and let you guys know that. So uh, there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff, I feel, coming from Patrick. Uh, he's been a great help. He's done a lot of free giveaways for us at the Sharonville Show. So we hope you stick around. We hope you subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll be notified anytime we go live for our auctions. But uh, enjoy this interview. It's a pretty good one. Here we go. Uh, our next interview is Mr. Patrick Hippel from the Osborne Mint right here in Cincinnati. And based on that presentation I just saw with Mr. Petty, me and Patrick have got some talking to do. Patrick, how are you? Doing well yourself. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Thank you very much for having us it's here. It's so good to have you here. It's so good to see you again. So last year, I, I didn't bring it with me. Last year, if, as you guys know, I got a, a silver piece uh, from the Osborne Mint that was a salute to uh, America's history of America's armed forces. Had to have it because it was just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and we were going to do some stuff throughout the year, but life got in the way. Uh, so now that we are back and we're talking with Patrick and Patrick's here, he has assured me we're going to do stuff in, in the next year. Uh, so I'm going to hold him to the fire on that. Uh, but before we talk about the Osborne Mint, mm -hmm. before we talk about some of the products you guys are doing and whatnot, you and I have to have a little historical chat. Please go right ahead. So I, I just uh, happened to sit on Mr. Petty, uh, his presentation. Mm -hmm. Last year you told me a story about how when the Confederates seized the Charlotte Mint, that meant that there was coinage had to, was not getting made. There's rumors, conjecture, maybe a little bit of truth, maybe a little bit of lies. We don't know. Uh, but that the Osborne Mint here in Cincinnati may have helped. As allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, rumor has it, that we received a special disposition during uh, the Civil War, that essentially when the Charlotte Mint was seized, uh, that yes, allowed Osborne Mint to be the only private mints within the United States to be allowed to produce U.S. currency for the U.S. government. For a short amount of time. For a short amount of time during the war. Now, what's interesting about this is, so, we talked we talked about the gold mining that was going on in North Carolina, which right. if before today, if you would have ever said, Hey, has gold ever been found in North Carolina? I would have looked at you like you had two heads. I would have been like, No, you're crazy. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, North Carolina was the first gold rush. Uh, from seventeen ninety nine to the early eighteen forties, mm -hmm. uh, gold was being produced out of uh, they found a twenty eight pound nugget. They mm -hmm. found a seventeen pound nugget. The interesting thing about the Charlotte Mint being seized um, so we had North Carolina gold from about 18, uh, let me get the dates correct for you guys. One second, because I just want to be accurate. Early in the 1800s, matter of fact, there you go. In the early 1800s, 89% of all gold for the U.S. Treasury came from North Carolina. 9% came from South Carolina and 2% was brought back from the California miners. So North Carolina was the original gold rush. The reason I wanted to bring Patrick in so quickly <laughs> was so you had the Kelly family out of Springfield, Ohio. Correct. The Kelly family decided to buy the entire Reed acreage in North Carolina. The Kelly family was from Springfield. If I'm not mistaken, Springfield is 30 miles, 40 miles from here? Roughly. Roughly. Mm -hmm. You have the Osborne Mint right here in Cincinnati. So, how do you, if you had to guess, how far away from Cincinnati is Charlotte? Uh, I'm going to guess by car, roughly 10 by hours. Cars. 10, 10 uh, hours. It's called 12. 12, 12 hours. So, you have this little 
radius, guys, and this is where I'm trying to connect historical dots, and I realize I'm reaching, but you have this little radius of the North Carolina Gold Rush. You have the Kelly family from Springfield, Ohio, who bought the um, uh, the Reed family's uh, acres of where their gold mines were and whatnot. And you also have the Osborne Mint right here in Cincinnati that allegedly might have saved the day as far as currency goes or helped save the day as far as currency goes in the early 1860s this is just incredible like i feel like i feel like some things are coming together and in regards to the history aspect uh i heard you mention earlier that next year is going to be the same show as mm -hmm. it is this year it's not going to be the same show why uh i can't speak to it right now okay but there should be some announcements coming out here in the next six months or so really but i do think that next year's since uh since i news medic association show the since i news medic show is definitely going to be one not to miss which is interesting because next year is the 40th anniversary of this show or the 40th year that this show has been running and if i'm smelling what patrick's cooking or if i'm picking up what patrick is laying down or if we're reading between the lines let me just say guys that i'm going to take a guess patrick obviously does not have to answer but the osborne mint has a lot of historical pieces uh some of which have never been seen many of which have never been seen We're the by any private mint in the united states uh been around since 1835 and that breadth of time actually just provides tons of historic knowledge in mm -hmm. there uh we even produced the campaign inauguration coins for abraham lincoln back in the day wow so and i think we talked about this last year but the interesting thing about those dyes is even back then in the 1850s 1860s fashion was still a thing uh he won his uh campaign was about ready to be inaugurated. He wasn't quite sure even back then if he was going to go to the inauguration with a beard or without. So since you didn't have computers back then and you couldn't just really push a button and have a new set of dyes cut, we ended up having two sets of dyes made, one with the beard, one without. Wow. And do those dyes still exist today? <laughs> it's highly possible. It's highly <laughs> Now, Patrick is an a employee of the Osborne Mint, so when he says things like highly possible, I, I would... Uh, I would uh, tend to believe him that there, there's there's a strong possibility. They are still out there and they're kept well hidden under lock and key. Right. Uh, which, guys, I don't know about you, but it, could you imagine being able to see the dyes from Abraham Lincoln's campaign coins, uh, the dyes that made his coins, not only the dye that they ended up settling with, with the beard, but also to see the dye with Abraham Lincoln without the beard um, in case he decided to shave. Uh, that's just incredible. I mean, wow. So what's been going on at the Osborne Mint lately? All kinds of good things. We have all kinds of fun things coming out here soon over the next few really? months. Uh, we've just recently been going through our Three Musketeers series. Nice. Which has just been released over the last six months. The fourth in the series, Richelieu, will be coming out here in the next month. Very cool. Uh, just yesterday, we had a special project that was released with the Chive. So I'll be more than happy to share here with you. Nice. This right here, special coin. I don't know if you can recognize the gentleman on there. Let's see if I can do a better job getting in front of the camera. That is but the chive? The chive. So this is a special Bill Murray coin, one of a thousand. Whoa. Limited edition. Bill Murray. Special coin done in conjunction with the chive. The wow. first thousand people who are able to go buy the NFT with Bill Murray will receive a physical representation of that NFT in the form of a solid silver 0.99 round. Keep calm and chive on. So Bill Murray, famous actor. Just a little well known. A little bit. Um, done amazing movies like Caddyshack. Uh, Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Uh, that's Ghostbusters. Uh, that's interesting. And this has got Bill Murray with the beard. Yes, it does. Interesting. So there's that, and then the Three Musketeers series. Yep. So the first one was Porthos. We did a slight difference on these. The Three Musketeers, the story by Alexander Dumas, as a well aware, traditionally has three men. This is three women. Wow. Attractive, so, hitting women who are all willing to fight. So you're doing a Three Musketeers series, female version. And these will be kept up throughout the next year. They will be available here in the United States for the next six months. 
Plus, then it will be re-released over in Europe as a new film uh, for The Three Musketeers is being released. That's awesome. That is awesome. And here's number two. That's Aramis. Aramis. All right, guys. I mean, we are seeing something that the uh, Osborne Mint is literally currently working on. The design on these is incredible. Wow. Full shout-outs to the artist, plus also the different levels of NQs, just different textures. Design elements on it work really well. Very cool. And then we have Athos. Athos. Guys, the Osborne Mint, please go to their website. Um, OsborneMint.com. OsborneMint.com. They have some amazing products. Like I said, I bought the tribute or salute to the armed forces. Uh, I believe the date was 1900 and 19, I don't even remember, uh, but I bought the piece because it was just so absolutely incredible. Um, so they, they've got all kinds of stuff at the Osborne Mint and something that Mr. Lawson will be uh, very happy to hear <laughs> is the Osborne Mint is going to be here next year and next year they might be making the 40th anniversary of the Sharonville Convention Center Central New Cincinnati Numismatic Coin Show a bigger hit than it ever has been. So uh, I think Mr. Lawson will be good, to, uh, happy yeah, to hear we're that. we're probably going to be part of that to help a little bit. <laughs> Just a little I bit. I know that they took, and if, if Osborne has told you guys, well, this is the United States' oldest known private mint, if memory serves me correctly. Yes, sir. Correct. And I'll tell you what, guys, you're looking at history here. Uh, me and Osborne last year, we was going to do some stuff. Uh, the time constraints got against us, but we plan on doing it this year. We will make it happen this year. Uh, it's just something that I'm definitely going to do. I'm not going to interrupt these guys any longer because i tell you what, JB does a wonderful job. Right. And, hey, I love it. You guys keep <laughs> it up. and Yes, sir. Enjoy yourselves. Thank you. These are all available. JM Bullion, Provident, oh, wow. and Atmex. So now this one right here is the new one that's going to be coming out here in the next month, originally the fourth in the series. Now this one is for coin op. This right here you guys can use as an auction or a giveaway if you'd like oh, to. Oh, thank you, sir. This right here is an original pre-production sample. So never actually saw the market, but these right here are what we use wow. in the initial stages of development. Guys, I, I don't know if you quite heard that. This this has not been put out yet. No, this has not been released yet. And this is one ounce of fine silver. And this is the Kingmaker, uh, what does that say right there? Uh, the Kingmaker. Okay, the Kingmaker. Uh, this is a new series coming out, and Patrick has donated this to CoinOp to do for a giveaway today. And we just like we did giveaways yesterday, uh, you guys got some sil silver rounds. Um, you got an uh, original bank, bank wrap roll of pennies from 1980. But Patrick has just donated this to CoinOp for a giveaway today of their new series, The Kingmaker. So one of you, if you're with <laughs> Ozart, Ben, <laughs> uh, if one of you are in the stream and we do the giveaway, one of you are gonna have the chance to win this amazing uh, silver round that is uh, in paying homage to The Kingmaker. Very, very cool. On the back, it's literally just clear planchet, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, you know, you could get that engraved uh, and with whatever you want. So thank you so much, Patrick. That's amazing. Uh, what else is going on with Osborne Mint? Uh, we're going to have a new series released next week. Will be the introduction of it. It'll be at San Diego Comic Con, a license Ooh. series with an artist out there. You'll start seeing more license items coming out in the next six months or so. Nice. We have a major series that will be released in conjunction with the Cincinnati Newsmatic Association, the Cincinnati Newsmatic Show, probably towards the beginning of the next year. Interesting. So keep your eyes open there. Cool. We have a number of different projects that will be coming up and being released here slowly but surely over the next three to six months. Does the uh, Osborne Mint ever do tours or anything like that? If you're ever interested in doing it, uh, having a tour, please reach out to me at Patrick at OsborneCoin.com and we'll definitely discuss it. I'm awesome. more than happy to have people come in. I'm always welcome to give tours. I put that out there for you guys, but that was really 100%. I'm going to do that. <laughs> You're always welcome. Thank love you, sir. You I, well, I'd love to see not only the facility, but um, whatever you'd be willing to show me as far as the history and, and whatnot, because it would be a true honor. Um, I think you're going to see a lot from the Osborne Mint, you guys. They're uh, they're definitely doing a, a lot of things. It's interesting, you know, for, from a bullion perspective, uh, a lot of people see things like Spider-Man or Star Wars 
and uh, those licenses have been given to the New Zealand Mint or the Perth Mint or, or whatnot. And those are, you know, really big mints and they're able to get those licenses and whatnot. But what I'm picking up from uh, Patrick here is you're going to start seeing more and more things come out from the Osborne Mint because I think you're going to see a lot more uh, companies or organizations or, or trademarks say, hey, you know, we don't need to go all the way to New Zealand when we've got uh, the oldest private mint in America right here in our own backyard. So, and we are pretty much still made in the USA to this day. Awesome. So, which really helps as far as supply chain constraints, things along those lines. Perfect. With the issues that have been going on in the world the last couple of years. It's always helpful to have somebody at home. Exactly. So you and you guys are doing silver coins. We're doing silver. We're doing copper. Okay. We've done some gold. Done Any some gold. Any one number of things. We do everything. I guarantee everybody on this uh, watching this now has touched one of our products in one way or the other. Wow. Anything from transit tokens, Chuck E. Cheese, Subway, Casino all the way up to international currencies and uh, high-end numismatics. Wow. We do it all. That's insane, guys. So, OsborneMint.com. OsborneMint.com. Guys, got to check it out. Uh, I wish I would have brought the piece that I bought last year with me so you guys could see it. It was just an amazing tribute to the armed forces. Uh, but it looks like Osborne Mint is doing a major uh, push on some things with Bill Murray, on some things with the Three Musketeers series. Uh, but I, I don't know if you caught what he said earlier. Um, Three Musketeers series, female version. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't even know what made you guys think of something like that. Uh, well, let's look at it this way. It's a nice little twist. It's one of those things that if we're going to have uh, three fighters that are going to go to war with the patriarchy, why don't we have them women? Exactly. Let's make it interesting. Let's make it different. Outstanding. Um, uh, you Somebody, guys struck Metro tokens. Is that true? That is true. We were actually the largest producer of New York transit tokens. Wow. Um, back in the day, we were the largest producer of casino tokens in the United States and possibly the world. Wow. There's a number of transit systems throughout the United States that all carried our uh, tokens. Lottery. Wow. Uh, casino, laundry tokens, Chuck E. Cheese. We took care of almost every Chuck E. Cheese along the country and in some international. Wow. You have touched our products in one way or the other. And there's a Chuck E. Cheese right, right here, right, right down, down the street. street. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, guys, is it, if anybody has any questions for Patrick, you can definitely put them up in chat. Uh, he's, we've got a few more minutes with him, uh, but it's just been a real treat. And I can't, I can't wait to see what CoinOp and uh, the... Uh, uh, Osborne Mint do in the in the coming year. Budget coin, uh, oh, he meant Cincinnati Metro tokens. Did you guys ever dabble in those? It's highly possible we did those, especially we did a number of local uh, okay. transit, things along those lines. I can't 100% guarantee that, yes, we did Cincinnati's. Awesome. I imagine we did. Nice. Any other questions, guys, from for Patrick while we've got him here? Uh, also, you know, just kind of dovetailing onto what we were speaking about, so you're going to see CoinOp uh, do some stuff with uh, the Osborne Mint in the in the upcoming year. And again, I can't stress enough, the 40th running of the Cincinnati uh, Numismatic Coin Show uh, right here at the Sharon Merrillville Con Convention Center, right around this time of the year in July or at the end of July, it's going to be the 40th anniversary uh, show. And Patrick has alluded uh, that the Osborne Mint is going to be here, not only be here, but they're going to be making some major contributions uh, and bringing in some major pieces to the next year's show. So I encourage you guys, absolutely do what you can to try and get here next July for that show. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited for it. Uh, I think you will be too. Awesome. Patrick. Excellent. Thank you As so always, much. it is such Appreciate a pleasure, it. and uh, I'll be in touch. I'll stop by before you get out of here today. Uh, thank you so much for our, to our for our viewers. Uh, again, the Osborne Mint just donated this as a giveaway, uh, so one of you guys is going to get a piece of Osborne Mint's products. Uh, I can't thank you enough for that. I see somebody asking, "What time are we going to give that away at?" What time are we going to give that away at? It is twelve twenty-eight. I tell you what, one o'clock. One o'clock, uh, if you'd like to come back I'll out, be back at one uh, so you can see who won it. Uh, so at one o'clock, I'll even put that uh, in the chat to remind people. One p.m. 
Goff for Osborne Mint Silver Round. If you Boom. have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to answer them at that time. Sounds good. So Patrick's actually going to come back around one when we do this giveaway. Uh, so if you do have questions for Patrick, uh, you go. If you don't, if you don't want to ask him now, uh, have him around one. So we're going to do the giveaway at one. Uh, Patrick's going to come back, uh, and you know, again, thank you so much. And I can't thank wait you. to be in touch with you over the next year about Would love you know, highlighting that. some things and, and whatnot. Definitely. Patrick, thank you. Thank you. All right, man. So guys, we've uh, we've been going nonstop. Uh, you know, this is this has just been uh, I, I can't tell you how amazed uh, I am and I'm blessed I am uh, I, I agree, budget coin hunter. That is uh, awesome. I'm just so blessed to be a part of this, to be a part of the Coin Op family, and to be a part of the, the Cincinnati Coin Show here in, in Sharonville. I, I really hope that you guys can make it out next year. It would be great.